Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with KLCS in Los Angeles. Today we are chatting with Drew Ferretti, President and CEO of Para Los Niños. Drew has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Drew, for joining us today. Well, thank you. So Para Los Niños is so well known. It is so impactful. It affects so many children and families here in Los Angeles and, and in a broader uh, arena. Talk about the results that you bring to the community and to these children and to these families and how you deliver those results. We work in a wide variety of ways. Um, and just as you said, so we, we have early education programs. Right. We have uh, work with kindergarten through 12th graders, um, some in our charter schools, some in our youth development programs. We also work in some overlapping communities where we're doing work in community, in, in neighborhood centers, in parks, doing community transformation work. And we're known, as, as you, you said, we have a great reputation and we're known for our wraparound service model. So it's not just about the moment in, in a school building or in a center, it's about the entire holistic approach. So let's talk about wraparound and what yeah. wraparound means. Our model is one where the way we, we ensure success and we make sure that, that children and families thrive is teachers are working side by side with therapists, with parent educators, with case managers. And we, we really think about, again, the success of a child in the context of their family and their community. And everybody is responsible for the success of the child. It's, it's, it's not as if there is a caseworker that then um, is, is, is responsible and everybody else kind of serves the view of the caseworker. Instead, it's, it's really about what that individual child needs. And in those teams, there are often debates as to how do we serve that child best. Every two weeks, we have something called an integrated service team meeting. And that is a group of people getting together, case managers, our mental health coordinators, our principals, our teachers, you name it, after school team, others, just general staff that are working to support. And they get together and they say, all right, who's on the radar? What's going on? Do we see something going to take, use me as an example. They, they, they might say, you know, something's been different about Drew. Something, he, he looks upset, he's coming in tired, what's going on? And then they really think about it as, it's not about, oh, it's your responsibility or your responsibility. Oftentimes you get to a place where you say, oh, that's something where we can adjust the environment inside the classroom. Boom, done, but not done, because then we make sure we're, we're managing and watching what's the progress for Drew, right? Or it might be, wait, there's something going on. We know it because we know families, but there's something going on in the home. Maybe there's food insecurity. Maybe there's some job or in, in this day and age, maybe some worries about sort of status, um, uh, immigration or otherwise, um, economic troubles of, of another sort. And a, we really job get together. Has been lost yeah. or and it, it's really getting together and saying, let's not label this as, oh, this kid is not learning and not progressing by the California standards. Or is acting out. Right, or, or they're a bad kid or this. It's really, well, what's going on? Are there barriers to learning? Are there barriers to success? And if there are, we're formed and founded 40 years ago on this idea that not only can we, but we should and will approach all those things in, in, a, in a fashion that says, if it's a learning barrier, we're going to figure that out. If it's something that's around social, emotional, mental, physical health and wellness, we're going to figure that out because those things lock together for success for kids. So let's unpack a bit more about how you're organized, because you have you have a substantial budget. Yeah, we do. We're, we're uh, just north of $40 million operating budget. And how many uh, children and families do you serve? So we serve uh, roughly 6,000 children and families every year. And, and some of those are, are, as I mentioned earlier, we have early education programs. So about 500 um, families that we're working with um, in Head Start programs. Mm -hmm. um, and another about a thousand that are in our schools, K through eight, uh, and then another 2,000 that are uh, in our youth workforce development and sort of college access programs. 
And how long do families receive service on average f through uh, Para los Niños? So some as, as little as a couple weeks, because uh, y I think you know this, we were founded uh, f nearly 40 years ago. Next year will be 40 years. Uh, on Skid Row, yeah, on Skid Row. And a uh, quick aside on that is a, a social worker saw a story in the LA Times about kids unsupervised and unsafe, very young, on Skid Row and said that will not be. So she got a, gathered a, a group of like-minded, civically engaged people, rehabbed a warehouse, created just a safe space. The American Social Compact. Yeah. We have a problem, let's, let's get together and let's solve it. And from there, we actually are still, we have a, a, a couple centers right on that block. So we're still in the Skid Row area. And uh, we also, as, as you know, uh, span beyond that uh, across LA County. But a lot of our work is focused in and around um, the, the, the urban part of, the more urban part of LA, if there is one. Um, so the reason I say this about the time that we spend with families is there are some families that, so in, in uh, June, when we did our eighth grade uh, culmination, we pulled aside the, the, the group, and I don't even remember the number, but it was at least a couple dozen of uh, kids who we had from when they were diap in diapers in our children's, in our, in our preschool, all the way to eighth grade. And we'll continue to, to be connected with them because families now have generational, multi-generational connections to us. But we also have kids who, I was at our middle school yesterday. Um, there, I met a, a young man who is living down the street in uh, one of the homeless missions, in Union Rescue Mission. And I don't know how long we'll have him, but how long we will have him, he and his family will have the, access to the broad array of services that we and our partners are able to provide. And that could be two weeks. It could actually be a year or longer, just because we also have families that start with us um, in, without housing and are, are living in temporary housing and then move to transitional housing and stay with us, even if it's a farther distance, because of the, the bonds we, we, we create and the opportunity to access this holistic suite of services. And the magnet for you is need, right? You go to where the need is greatest. So the question ends up becoming, how do you encourage people to be independent of the services that you provide? How do you shape your services so that as, as quickly as is, is possible, they can disconnect yeah. and you can serve someone else? I, f I feel strongly and we think and act, I think, deeply around making sure that we're not uh, instituting or, or, or keeping in a power dynamic that suggests less than. Right. Um, so we try to position all of our work, um, and every day we try harder, uh, to, as side by side with the families we work with. So we really are partners. Um, so the success that, that we talk about is success that's, that, that comes from partnering with families and making sure they don't feel like maybe uh, a home language that's not English, that's an asset. That's not something to be taken away. Um, the, the fact that somebody's working two or three jobs and just, just making ends meet, that's not a bad thing. That is an opportunity that's to an, it's, leverage. It's admirable. Yes. It's admirable, that kind of work ethic. And, 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 and I, I think your definitions implied by your examples are so interesting because it starts with respect. Mm -hmm. It starts with choice. It starts with consultation where you are asking this empowered individual, and by asking, you are recognizing their power, Absolutely. what their needs are, right? It's, it's creating programs that, that are not just rote programs that are provided to everyone, but options that uh, families can select. Yes, and, and even it's, it's now, the, the way we think about families and communities and education is now part of our, um, I mentioned that we had just kicked off a, uh, a strategic plan, a, a new one for the, the, the current five years. And part of that was actually thinking deeply and changing the way and being more intentional in the way we talk about our work. So we now talk about our three pillars and that, that really lead to this long-term vision of thriving children and youth. And those three pillars are excellent education, powerful families, and strong communities. And all of our work in some way 
touches into those things. And those, those pillars really support our approach, um, which is, uh, as we, we started the conversation, it's, it's less about a collection of programs that sometimes connect and more about uh, strategic, intentional, and real ways of connecting. In terms of, of the scope of your activities and how you feel that they will evolve over the next uh, months and years, mm -hmm. where do you see Para los Niños uh, developing over the next, let's say, five years? There's so much, I think, important recognition now about um, sort of trauma and the impact of trauma and toxic stress and what that does to, to a child and a family early and then throughout their, their lives. And, and how it creates repeated patterns absolutely. that are destructive to not only the individual but to communities, to society. With, with toxic stress, it interferes with learning. It interferes with the ability to hold jobs. Mm -hmm. It interferes with human relationships. And so what you end up having, what you end up allowing to happen through this buildup of toxic stress is that you actually are, are damaging the whole of LA County yeah. um, because you're neglecting a problem that is present, yeah. but you're saying, hey, if I neglect it long enough, maybe it'll fix itself. Yes. And, and right to that point, one, a, a big area of, where, of our work um, is in this sort of uh, comprehensive uh, service approach. And that means partnering with the County Department of Mental Health to do work in communities um, and in school communities, not just the ones that we operate, but other school communities, to, to equip parents and teachers and staff with the, the skills and tools to really be trauma-informed. And what does that mean and what does that look like? Or um, work that we do, uh, we, we do work that we call community transformation. And we're working with, uh, uh, we, we operate a Best Art uh, regional network uh, where we're leading with, uh, through First Five Los Angeles. And that is very similar. And it, 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 it's, it's really about voice to parents and community members to set the agenda. What is it that that, that community believes is going to move the needle to get more kids kindergarten ready and more families healthy and thriving. Drew Ferretti, thank you so much for describing the work of Para los Niños. Thank you so much for exploring some of these very important issues. And thank you so much for your insights. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure.